Uh, today, Pastor Alfie uh, was giving me that Bible verse to focus on it, which is from Roman 9. Uh, what if God desired to show his wrath and to make known his power has endured with much patience, as he described for us, uh, vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. So is God making uh, vessels of wrath? No, it's the nature of that person who is not really responding to the grace of God. Like we heard now how the Pharaoh, every time, because he knew those false gods, all of them, and he thought that our God is one of those, similar, same, one of them. But our God is different. Uh, we had a, a friend, she's from India, and uh, she said something very interesting into uh, when the, the Hebrews were uh, having a baby, they, they speak into his ear or her ear. Uh, Yahweh is the Lord, Jehovah or Jehovah uh, in English. Jehovah is the Lord. So they recognize that that's the one who is God and all the other gods, because into the 10 plagues, God was dealing with all those gods one by one. And, and uh, the power of God was revealed to the, uh, to the Pharaoh, but he hardened his heart. He chose to have that direction of not responding to the love of God. And I saw this picture on the internet and I was searching it for it because Pastor Elfie mentioned it. Um, the look you get from people when you tell them that they have to repent, follow Jesus Christ and live holy. So they look at you with those, <laughs> this guy is good to get all those faces, you know, this is the way I respond to you. You can look at their faces and see, oh, that's what we see every day. And God is still patient and still loving and still giving us chance. So for me, I'm just gonna get you, people go for uh, introduction, but then the, the topic, and then the, I'm gonna go from the conclusion, just in case that you guys are tired and I'm losing you. See here, we were talking last time about God's plan. He has a plan. Uh, and, and here from this here, see what, why those people decide to go for that direction. So here is the answer from Ecclesiastes 8, 11 to 13, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So God will not judge people. Oh, you, uh, you still not cut his hand, you know, or you have lust with your eyes. Let's, you know, take your eyes, pluck your eyes out. He don't do that. The sentence against the evil doing is not executed uh, fastly or speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is full set into them to do evil. Oh, and who is there a God, whatever? The fool said in his heart, there is no God. So there is not really um, the God element or God factor into the mind of people anymore in this generation as we go um, you know, closer, closer to the coming of Jesus. There, though a sinner do evil hundred times and his days, his days is prolonged. You think he should die because the sin is something really uh, producing disease and, and corruption to the body, then the end result of doing sin and, and live for yourself selfishly and hurting your body, your soul, and your spirit with the sin, then you should die quickly. But God is not doing that. And it's in, I really cannot understand how wonderful is that God through a verse like this. Um, and, and his day will be prolonged. He'll give him more days. Uh, we're talking about the vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor, of shame. So God give them more benefit, give them more money, give them more li life. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that they fear God, which fear before him. Of course, the people who fear God will, uh, will be good, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he fears not before God. So even though they don't fear God, they don't have even uh, approval or there is a God or whatever. This is like fantasy of the Christian. And I'm seeing that said, you know, into the news now around the, <clears throat> the new monarchy. Uh, people are really trying to attack. Uh, then the church will go, Church of England go against um, the Christian law and stuff like that. It was in the news today. So, and they said that like, most of the people in England are not really be believing in anything. They're atheists. And the one coming from outside, they have other religions. So why should you continue to uh, harass us by the, those law of the church? And 
Uh, we preached about it last week in, in the street and we didn't know that this is gonna be proclaimed that format that quickly. People really, really are uh, liking the wickedness. But here is the key of that, um, you know, why God put in honor of vessels and, and, and another one of shame, one of honor. Uh, another one, um, these things you have done, this is in the book of Psalms now, you have done and I kept silence. So God see the wickedness, see the mal doing, the iniquity, which is not really high level of sin, you continue into doing whatever you're doing until the corruption go to the core and he keeps silence. You saw that I was altogether such one as yourself. I'm like you, but I will reprove you. I mean, I will correct you. And I set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you that forget God, least I tear you in pieces and there be no one to deliver you. Um, we preach mercy, we preach the love of God outside the street, but we have to give warning for the people, otherwise we'll be false prophet. So God is really here, he's silent, he saw all that evil and he keep himself quiet because he is not like us. His nature is to go to the uh, manger, you know, not to be proud in a palace or take revenge or, oh, uh, they're doing this, let let them slap on the face so they learn next time not to do it. He is not doing that. And leave the, the vessels, you know, to harden, harden itself until it crack and broke itself. Sin is very uh, toxic. So this is my conclusion, just in case we go to different things and, and I lost you. Um, so here, what if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power nor endure much long suffering the vessels of wrath? Uh, fitted for destruction. So the, the the Pharaoh was setting himself to destruction and his heart was hardened more and more. You can see many ways here are those vessels are done, different way. God can shape you and shape me in a different way. Some vessels are different from others. Uh, you can see different shape, but some of them of honor more valuable. You know, you put them and 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 put thousands and millions of dollars in and something like that, uh, and, and some others, you know, go for the garden. So who are you exactly? Are you a vessel of honor? Are you colorful? Are you uh, um, really something valuable of us? You put it into inside. I really don't know, but you are the one to decide which, which type of vessels are you. Because when God created you, he created something very good. Out of all his creation, he looked at you and said, that's very good. So if you decide to crack or to, uh, to harden, harden until you're useful for nothing and you need to be thrown in the bin, that's the decision that you made. Because here we, we've seen that the people don't believe that God gonna take a stand one day and uh, stop all that evil. Uh, the evil, the sin uh, uh, is hurting God and hurting us day after day and has to come to an end. So we are type of vessels. But here is uh, that uh, type of vessels I thought it was very holy in the beginning of my Christian life, maybe 10 years ago or so. Uh, this is a crack, so the glory of God is being sown through you. It means when you have brokenness, when you have something painful, whatever happened in your heart, and, and show the glory of God. But recently, I, I think wrongly, because people, the broken vessel keep talking broken things. God has to fix you, like Pastor Elfie was saying, there is a power of transformation. He has to transform you. So not only one part of you will be leaking the glory of God, or oh, this one should be fixed. I've seen, you know, in, uh, in charismatic churches, they draw uh, pictures like this and everyone put money on this, hallelujah, beautiful. And I used to love something like that because I myself had a lot of things in my life. But later on, I was just thinking, seeing all those things. I don't think that's what God wants, a broken vessel, when he can transform me to a brand new one. And I came across that one, you know, that really it's a lamp, clear, transparent. Nothing of you is seen. So what is in sin is only the glory who is inside. The more nothing of you, the more the glory is shining and seeing outside. So those are more poetic but God has to heal you, to transform you, because people hurt, hurt it, that will hurt others. 
unless you're healed, the Lord is having power to transform the broken vessels and may use it again to make him powerfully use in the hand of God to do effect on others. Now I'm gonna explain to you some example to make it more interesting than those uh, lectures. Um, there was vessel one day and this vessel was a common vessel. If you recognize this story, what is common vessel was done in John, they said there were set uh, in, in John two, the kind of Galil, uh, first miracle of Jesus. There was six water pots of stones that were done of stones, not very good thing. And after the manner of the purification of the Jews containing two or three furking a piece. So they put those, containers full of water for purification. What is this purification? Uh, we see in Mark, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with the, uh, with the file, uh, eat bread with the file, that is to say the unwashed hand, they found fault. How can your disciple eat with unwashed hand? So they have this water to drink, but that this water containers were for the washing of their hands and their feet and all that when they come. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they do not eat. This is one of the very important uh, thing of the uh, Jewish culture and many other things that there be, which they have received. So the vessel should, uh, washing cups, pots, brazen, and they have to have those pots for uh, washing. Back to our story. Those are the vessels, six of them, they were done, done of stone and they were prepared for this big feast for washing. You could be any one of those vessels because in the end of the day, you are a vessel that God gonna use. But listen here, see the beauty of this story. That vessel, instead of being here, it, it is transformed a wonderful vessel who carry the wine of God. He, the communion, pre-existing communion before the time, Mary asked Jesus to do that miracle before. Uh, it's supposed to be in the end of his time, you know, and he, he didn't want to do it because it's not the time. But see here, that vessel, it contained water, if you see my arrow, and this vessel contained wine. There is a power of transformation from that vessel to that vessel, which are exactly power, uh, exactly the same. This is the same thing we have in the communion. As we take that piece of bread and this uh, wine or, or juice, whatever, uh, and and it's wine, it is bread, but the power of transformation of this, and many people around the world do not recognize from the Christian faith. They don't recognize the transformation which happens through that piece of bread and this wine. It is transformed to be Jesus in a physical format or tangible format. Like Pastor Alfie wanted to touch Jesus in a format tangible. The, the communion is one of the tangible format of Jesus really and truly. Same thing happened into that vessel. You could be that vessel, still broken, still having hurts, but you've never been transformed to that vessel who carry now the wine. When the, the master of the, um, of the feast arrived, he tested one and said, oh, what is wrong with you people? People give the bad wine first, then the good wine. This is a good wine, the blood of Jesus who forgive your sins and my sins and transform you from just a pot full of water to a pot full of wine, full of uh, cleansing of your sins, the blood who cleans our sins. So today, uh, think about these things, you know, when you go, uh, like uh, we said here that God has not appointed us to us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has no desire, the death of any of his children, but he is not setting us for us. That's why he sent the son to, to die. And here, Pastor uh, Alfie talk about the Pharaoh. Um, Pharaoh had like, uh, king, you know, uh, gods. The first of them, the most powerful, the protection God is the, the serpent that was in his head. You can see it here into to the uncommon. Um, and uh, because of that, God uh, make him harden his heart so people can recognize there is no God that God cannot uh, um, destroy because they're all cre creatures, you know, nothing. So he talked about that part. So let's go to another uh, part of uh, the topic. Um, sometimes we come to a place when we really want to utter condemnation and judgment of people. 
uh, here was such people, you know, one of them is very known to us is Jonah, 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 and, and Ninawa, Nineveh. Uh, he don't wanna go to save people. So here is the same situation uh, uh, Paul faced uh, in Thessalonica, and he, there was people there forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they must be saved. They don't want them to be saved. You go to someone which is, you know, not your color, not your uh, re religion, with whatever, and you, you think, uh, should I go and talk to him? He's, he's Muslim, maybe he's gonna reject me. How do you know? You know, one day I remember a guy was full of tattoo from top to foot, you know, like really. And I said, waste of time to go talk to a person like that, go to someone else. And I said, would you pray with me? And straight away, without any discussion on anything, he asked Jesus in his heart. And I was so intimidated of my bad heart. I was thinking that's not for redemption, don't lose your time. He's, he's probably full demons, whatever. And things like that judgment in my heart, but God judged him in a different way. He asked Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come his life. So we are sometimes like this. So these are people who are forbidding for the Gentiles and the word Gentiles is not my favorite word, but I mean to the nations that they might be saved, fill up with their sins all, uh, always, I think. Uh, for the wrath is coming upon them to the outermost. So they want that this Nineveh will be judged and destroyed. And the best example in the Bible was uh, Jonah. He was not happy to go. He was forced. God has to torture him three days into the belly of, uh, give him hard time to uh, shape him in a format of a vessel who can be used by God. And when he speak the word of God into a whole nation, from the animal to the children, to the king, that everyone poor and, and, and rich, young and old, that all of them set the, the wearing the cloth and they wanted to repent. Great revival. And he didn't wanna do it because they are the Gentiles, they are the people who are not his uh, Jewish blood friends. And we do that sometimes. So how God is creating that vessels and reshaped him, give him the will. And he changed. We don't have to make that to God, just have to learn what he's, he's saying. Um, here in Timothy he's saying, nevertheless the foundation of God's stand should having this seal, the Holy Spirit. The Lord knows them that they are his. So don't think that God is putting, he give more honor to the, the, the vessels of wrath, the one who gonna go for destruction, give them more life, more benefits. But he know his, he know his vessels, you know, his children. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So that's simply the qualification for you to be transformed from, uh, you know, uh, your iniquity and, and search for God, your creator and your savior. But a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth. Many type of vessels into people around us. You can see the picture in front of you. Vessels of honor, gold and silver, wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And uh, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and meet for the master's use, prepare unto every good work. So you're not really here to be just a vessel. You are a vessel to be used. So we talk now about those vessels who've been to transform uh, uh, into the, the, uh, the pre-communion, I will call it, of Canal Galilee, you know, having the wine serve instead of just water for, so God elevate the level of those purif purification uh, vessels, mm. just cleansing and washing and whatever to another level of, uh, you know, the, that wine, which is no one have tasted before. Mm. The wine that is only coming from the hand of the creator. So you can be like that. you be mm. transformed from le one level to another from uh, a running away uh, prophet or man of God to a man mm. who just preached one ma message and the whole city transformed. This is a transformation, things that God is doing it to us. And sometimes he heal our cracks and make us transparent. The more you don't wanna show of yourself, the more Christ is showing through you. Uh, we go here into this. 
there is something called the sin of the Amorites. When God was doing um, the, co the, the, uh, the, the covenant with, with Abraham in Genesis 15, he was telling him that your children will go to Egypt 400 years and they will be in slavery and that, that, that. And he tell him all the story ahead. Nothing was surprised. Go and read it for yourself. Way before, uh, you know, the, the birth of all those uh, children, Jacob and, and Joseph and all those, he said to him, but the fourth generation, they shall come higher or shall come back again for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. The Amorites are the people of the land around of Canaan. And they were very, very wicked. They're doing horrible things in the sight of God. But mm -hmm. God will, is patiently waiting for them. And these people of God, like the giving children a sacrifice and, and to Moloch and doing a lot of horrible mm -hmm. things um, that is not pleasing in the God's sight. And he was um, very, very patient waiting. Uh, the children of Israel has to wait for 400 years, four generation before God decide and end an end. You know they're falling, falling, falling of the grace of God. Uh, they keep you know uh, despising God and turning their back to whatever He's saying to them, and and God was patient. Uh, so here is um, a very very important Bible verse. For the, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Hold the truth, or in another word, who hide the truth and, and want the, uh, the untruth be taken. Mm -hmm. And if you read carefully that first Roman, he's talking about two big sins. If you're not really um, understanding, first things is the sin of idolatry, uh, mm -hmm. which people. Um, worship things instead of God, which take them to homosexuality. And that's very, very uh, difficult chapter or very, uh, not difficult to understand, but I mean, not very serious chapter because people do not think, you know, that the sin of uh, idolatry is that as bad. It is as bad and turn people nature even. So the God revealed himself, the wrath of God was revealed on the ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men. Why? Because they knew the truth. Even though they know the truth, they wanted to pervert it and change it to another truth. Um, so here is not, God is not never gonna be, um, you know, like a God who get angry and do us on them unfair, unfairly, no. They know everything. And you see like God into that chapter, he gave them to three horrible things, one after the other. He gave them to the lust. So they do all the sinful things and the, uh, they, they fit, no pleasure finish with them. And that's kind of punishment for them. And, and then he give them to the, uh, uh, the what is it, the rooted mind or, you know, the confused mind. So this is here, they get himself into the punishment where they are still alive. More they get into their sin, the more the sin will get into them and they get more into the three level of judgment already before they go to the end uh, of final judgment of God. God is giving them, the world is saying. So when you see those people who prefer to go on the perversion things, they think uh, uh, it's okay, it's not okay. They're already starting the judgment and the penalty while they're still alive on earth. Uh, one of them is their desire who have no end. Uh, and I wanna talk more about that, but I mean like, hmm. some people here are standing and crying for God, for how long God? You're gonna see the, that unrighteous and do not uh, end it. Uh, in the book of Revelation, they're saying that those people coming from the, the great tribulation, they will be all killed because of their faith. They'll be beheaded uh, because they didn't want to take the mark of the beast and they're crying to God. So they are under the altar. You can see that's the altar here. And they're all wearing white. Um, and, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul of them that were slain for the word of God and for testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, how long, O Lord, holy and true, thou, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that they were on the earth? So, and the answer of God, until all your brothers will be beheaded. So God has this very strange, uh, you know, ideas. He wait for the sin of the Amorite to be fulfilled, 
but he, he will wait for all the unfairness to happen to his children. So he give them reward, which they deserve. It's a little bit for us to understand, but God is prolonging because this is the only he heaven they will see. And after that, there will be sorrow, pain, psychological uh, agony for eternity. So God is extending a little bit their life on earth to give them a bit of, uh, you know, normal days. Uh, and, and here is the fairness of God. While the children of God who are his, they will have a lot of uh, rewards and, and eternal happiness for eternity. Here is Jesus. We can see that he, um, and through covetousness shall, uh, uh, there will be faint words, whose judgment now is as long time linger. This is Peter. If you read in the book, in Peter, um, writing many verses about God punishment. And I was very astonished to find that when I was researching because Peter looked like uh, a nice guy, you know? But many verses, I find them that God is really uh, having a judgment. So here Jesus come and took, you know, the envy, they were talking to him and, and following everywhere he go and, and they hassled him with every way or another. And in the end, he, he got the wipe and, and he said, this is the house of my father and you make it a den of thieves and he kicked them out. And this is gonna happen one day very soon. Because judgment mm. now as long time linger and their damnations numbers not. Uh, the English is hard for me, but it means like their judgment from the mm. beginning is not gonna be uh, delayed anymore and their destruction will come without slumber. Just like that and the, the judgment of God will start. And of course, the so here is the, the Peter again, Give us a good advice. Regard the patient of the Lord as an opportunity for salvation. Yeah. Don't think that he is just like really very slack or soft or don't see the injustice and unfair. No. Like again, I repeat it. The only heaven that these people will see those vessels of dishonor, of shame, it, it's him on earth. They will not see good days anymore if they die or if Jesus come. This is the end of the good days. And every moment of their eternity will be judgment, sorrow, and, and, and regret. Um, as for us, you know, whatever, you know, not Peter, Apostle Paul said, that's very, very minimal. What we experience here as uh, any hard time we have as compared to the glory that we will experience when God come. Um, the Lord know how to rescue the, go the godly from trials. So God is not going to let you try it more than you can think. You can have a little bit of time to reshape you. Like how good is that to be into the, the tummy of the whale or the, is it the whale? Uh, like Jonah mm. for three days. I don't think that's a pleasant place with this hyper acidity and the food and the, all these things, mm. you know, being there, you know, and God don't lie. This is a story which is true. So you can be having similar time, difficult time of any reason, you know, but God know how to rescue you from all those trials because you are his mm -hmm. child. He know you, he prepare you from the beginning that that vessel will respond when the others will be loved even more, but they will have no response. And he's saying here, um, the Lord know the, to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust. I want you to see this because many people just have the gospel, they preach half gospel. And it's not mm -hmm. okay to, to preach half gospel on the end time like this. Yes. Oh, God loved you. God. Oh, he loves you and he will mm. rescue you and whatever, but see the rest of it. And he reserved the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Mm. Peter mm. again. So Peter has been really, I uh, didn't have time to take all the verses, but it was just like really um, uh, having many of them, you know. So mm. here is again, uh, uh, we pray. Every day in our daily prayer, when we say, let your kingdom come, will be done and say, lead us in, not into temptation. That's an essential prayer. As you pray for your daily bread, you pray for protection for you and your family, because our enemy is more vicious than ever before. So you be really protecting yourself, but that prayer, and you mean it when you go out, before you go out of your home, uh, you mean that prayer. Um, don't want to scare you, but um, here there is, God who wanted to deliver us and uh, mm. he do not want really uh, his children to go. So what is it here? Lamentation. This is one of the very sorrowful uh, verse, uh, passage of the scripture, but it's not. 
it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed mm -hmm. because his compassion fail not. The Lord love human beings. He just loved us. And one of them have I pleasure in the death of the wicked. God don't have a pleasure for the death of his children. He created that uh, mm -hmm. second death or this uh, fire, eternal fire, lake of fire for uh, Satan and his angels, fallen angel, not for humankind. But if you decide to harden your heart like the Pharaohs did, after all the miracles and the signs and the, the warning, and you, you've seen the power of God, and you still mm -hmm. want to deny it and play stupid, you know, you harden your heart, you die. It's your decision. But here is the heart of our father. And he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, declared the Lord God. This is in Ezekiel, part of the scripture, which are really uh, tough. It's not a New Testament. Then nor not rather than he should turn from his way and live. So God wants us all to live. And he give mm -hmm. more patience, more uh, virtue, more time, lifetime, more money, more wealth to the ungodly, to the, um, to the vessels of this honor. Uh, I, I, I forget to tell you about this part. This is my best part, which I, I, I'll be upset if I didn't share it. Uh, talking about vessels, if you think about the grail or the cup that Jesus gave himself to the humankind, which one you think it's the one who can qualify? You probably say that's too rich and they have a cross on it, whatever. So probably this one don't qualify. Maybe Jesus had one of those or one of those when he gave himself. So mm -hmm. don't look at how about your vessels because we're talking about vessels here. We talk about the vessels who got the wine that is no one like it. We're talking about that vessel which give the cup for the eternal salvation of humankind and was given in a vessel. So you can be any cup you want. And it doesn't matter how you look from outside, as long as you give the Lord the ability to break you and to heal you and to transform you to a totally denial uh, of yourself, but let the shiny life of God through you. There is an eternal salvation through the cup that he gave to humankind on the last day and the last supper. And I don't think was one of those, or maybe one of those. I think the cup that Jesus gave was very simple, earth-made cup. So don't think about yourself, you're little into the sight of the Lord. You can mm. give life and life eternal to many through your humble heart. So your purity, so your uh, lack of pride and all those beauty that can come from you and the, the fragrance of Jesus comes through you to other people. So Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that uh, you, you design vessels of honor and other vessels prepare for destruction. So I pray, mm. Father, that every vessel is in here will never be um, put in shame. They will never go against your will and harden their heart like the Pharaoh did. But they will submit to your good will, Lord, and they will come to uh, say, I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. Mm. I want your power to come changing me and transforming me to something beautiful that even if it's humble and simple, you will love it because it carry mm. you. It carry your blood, it carry your pain, it carry your uh, redemption and your love for humankind. Let me be one of those vessels, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.